laser source. Cube with printer and kernel cube are the same that we have seen. We have an extra device, passive device, that is the quarter wave plate. Uh, photodiode, we have already seen them. But then you have the polarizator. Why, in your opinion, you, I have to use the polarizator? <coughs> Uh, not to analyze the polarization state, but to be sure that, in, for example, this polarizator is uh, uh, a polarizator that passes all the light that is polarized orthogonally to the slide. Okay? So, what does it mean? That I take the component only along this direction. And I... You have to say something? Ah, okay. And so... Uh, to have interference, I have to have that the field has the same direction. If I have orthogonality between the, the, the two fields, I don't have interference. This is the point. Okay? So, for example, now here I want to take the two components orthogonal to the slide from the, elect, sorry, from the reference field and the measuring field. And so I build up the first signal. And since the component that is orthogonal to the slide sees the fast <laughs> axis, okay? The measuring field sees the fast axis. I don't see here the extra path. I see the extra path in this signal because now I use a polarizator that passes the light that is planar to the slide, okay? Since uh, the component of the measuring field that is planar to the slide sees uh, the slow axis, then it's, it's for this reason that I see here the extra path. Okay? Okay. Uh, in your opinion, what happens here? Uh, if, if I go uh, further with the, the reasoning, uh, the polarization state of the laser is still linear or not? If uh, this is true, if I have two components that oscillate with the same phase, okay, this means that the polarization is linear, okay, because these two components oscillate with the same phase. And so the electric field is zero, is always oscillating in this direction, always. But now, if uh, the component along X sees an extra path. In your opinion, the polarization state is the same or not? No, it is not the same. And it is circular polarized. Because now what happens? Uh, let's suppose that <coughs> we are considering just this phase difference. This component remains the same. This component sees an extra path that is equal to a quarter of the wave. So the situation of the output is this one. This is the input, and this is the output. Uh, I have E, Y, and pay attention to the fact that now at the output, Face or interface of the plate E0 is at zero. Okay? So I cannot see it because it's zero. But now when I go out of the plate, this goes down and this goes up. Okay? And when I go here, this goes down and this goes back. So I have a polarization state that goes in this direction. Okay? Now the polarization state is circular. And it is counterclockwise. Or it depends on which is the side that you look at. Okay? But anyway, if you look at, at the polarization state with the same reference of the input plane, the polarization is counterclockwise. Okay. So with a, port, with a plate, you can also change the polarization state of a wave. You can transform a circular one into a linear one with a quarter wave. And you can transform a linear one into a circular one. Okay. So they are very 
very useful and magical device. It's magical simply because they are they offer to the electromagnetic waves two different refractive index. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, why all of this, uh, uh, let's say, complication to build up a signal that is proportional to the scene of the phase difference? Uh, because you have this. Well, this is our starting condition, okay? With the ambiguity. Here we had the ambiguity of uh, knowing the direction of motion of the target. If we <coughs> design, oh sorry, if we report here the scene wave, then we have that the scene wave here has a discontinuity. This is the point. Since now we have two signals that are in quadrature with each other, we can avoid ambiguity if we use also this signal. In particular, one approach that was the, the first that was used historically was to build up, again, the squared wave related to the amplitude. So we use a discriminator with the value of the discrimination put at E0, or the, C, the DC value. And so again, as before, we build up the squared wave of the cosine. So when I am down or lower than the DC value, my square is zero. When I am uh, up, sorry, when I am above the DC value, my squared wave is one, let's say. Again, for the scene wave, okay? And then I do something more. I do the squared wave also of the slow signal. So let's look at the, <coughs> at the cosine. Now the slope here is negative, okay? And so the, squared, the square wave is uh, zero. Here the slope became positive, and so the square is one, and so on. And so also for the scene wave. Uh, in particular now, if I differentiate all of this square wave, I have jump that are positive and negative, of course. If I use a rectifier, all the jump became positive, of course. Now, for a phase difference of 2 pi, I have four jumps. This is an important point. Uh, okay, okay. I, I will say this in a moment. Let's just consider what happens or what are the value of these squared waves in this instant, okay? Uh, for example, instant one, <coughs> we have zero, one, zero, zero. You can check on the slide. Third, and third, and four, we have these values. Then if you look at what happens when the target changes its direction of motion, you see what? That the amplitude cosine and the slope of the cosine squared remain the same. And this is exactly what we have said before. Since the cosine function is an even function of the phase difference, these numbers, these values, does not change if I change the direction of motion. But instead, what happens to the scene value? The, the value of the slope of the scene and the value of the amplitude of the scene. They are complementary. So, one zero here, zero one. One one, zero zero, and so on. Okay? So now, if I find a way to mix all these digital values, I can build up a function that is, for example, one when the, the, when the device, the sorry, the moving mirror is moving away from the instrument. So my displacement is increasing. And it is equal to zero, for example, when the direction of motion is changed and my target mirror is moving back to the device. Simply because I have this complementarity of these two signals. The idea is this one. So, as I said before, in one period, I have four passes. Uh, this will uh, with, this will mean something on the resolution, okay? And anyway, if I am able to mix this logical signal in a particular way, I can build up a function that is one when I'm moving far away, and that this is zero when I'm moving back 
Tu vens. Okay, so this is the logic function that you have to build. Okay, this is the or exclusive or operation, and this is the. Um, I don't remember what is the, the operation, but the complementary one. Okay, the negation. Okay, so this is good. Uh, okay, so now uh, <coughs> you can build the function with logical ports, or you can do it with a personal computer or microprocessor or whatever you want. Okay, this is not important. The important thing is that you have to build up this logic function. And now, since you count four pulses for each two pi variation or for each fringes development in the signal, now your resolution is not lambda over two nor lambda over four, but it is lambda over eight because it should have been lambda over 2 if you had just one pulse for each 2 pi phase variation. Okay? Since now you have 4 count for each 2 pi phase variation, lambda over 2 is divided by 4, and the resolution is lambda over 8. So now you are doing something that is able to measure with a resolution of 80 nanometers. Okay? So we are going very down with resolution. <coughs> Uh, <coughs> okay, since uh, this function is 1 or 0, depending on the direction of motion, of course you can uh, sum and subtract this digital count uh, inside here, inside your, uh, let's say, smart part of the device. And so the information on target displacement is uh, conserved in digital units that correspond to displacement of lambda over A. Now, uh, <coughs> we have solved the problem of the uh, determination of directional motion. We have solved it. OK, we have done some complication on the optical setup. This is true. But not too much, because uh, remember that a linearly polarized laser is not a costly laser. Okay? This does not cost too much. So from a point of view of uh, uh, of course, this setup is quite quite simple as before. Again, the quarter wave plate are not a cheap components. They're not cost too much. You have inserted two polarizer. Again, also the polarizer are not too much uh, expensive. Okay, so from the point of view of cost, the setup is easy. <coughs> it's quiet, and you have solved the problem. But anyway, this. Uh, uh, interferometer has some problem. By the way, it has been extensively used. It, it, this was the first real uh, commercial success of interferometer. Okay. Uh, why we have some issues? For example, bandwidth. What do you think? If the target moves very slow, what happens? I I go back here. Because probably here is the answer. You think that there is a limit in the lowest possible lowest possible velocity of the target or not? There is a limit because implicitly when you do these squared waves, so the squared waves are related to the slope of the original signal or of the starting signal, you do a derivative. A derivative is a high pass function, okay, in terms of frequency domain. And so you can seal out very low frequency and DC movement of the object, okay? So the point is uh, <coughs> where, okay. What I'm saying is what I'm saying is this: uh, if you <coughs> a derivator, I hope that this is the English name. I hope a differentiator. Of course, this is better. The, uh, 
differentiator in the frequency domain is a function that does something like this. We have the frequency in logarithmic scale. Here we have the module of the function. This is the border diagram of the module. And you have something like this. This is 0 dB, OK? And this is the uh, F dB. What does it mean? That the frequencies that are lower than a particular value are attenuated. And all the frequencies that are higher than this value are passed with a gain of 1. <coughs> Sorry. OK? So you cannot measure the C value of uh, movement. So, or better, you cannot understand if the moving target is at rest. It's still. Okay? <coughs> this is the point. Oh, well, this is one point. Uh, in, in particular, this also means that you are doing a baseband measure. Okay? So you are taking. Uh, into the measure all the components of frequency movement. Or, sorry, all the frequency components of the measurement. OK. Uh, so we have seen that there is a limit in the uh, lowest possible velocity. But there is also, for you, in your opinion, a limit in the fastest velocities of the, of the object. The lowest uh, limit is uh, depends on the fact that we do a, dif a differentiation onto the signal. And so we have a high pass filter. The, lower, the highest possible velocity is limited by what? Because of course it is limited by, by what, in your opinion? Remember what we are doing. We are counting <coughs> pulses. OK? So in your opinion, if the object moves very fast, the slope of this curve became higher. Okay? If it became higher, these pulses are shorter in time, or well, better. The, <coughs> the uh, I don't remember. Anyway, these pulses became uh, uh, closer. This is the right way to say it. Became closer in time. Okay. And so the limit on the fastest velocities is uh, fixed by the bandwidth of your electronic. Okay. <coughs> In particular, In particular, you can say that V max, so the maximum velocity should be higher than what, in your opinion? Let's do this in the easiest way, in the easiest possible way. You have a, an electronic bandwidth, okay? Okay? And you have a resolution that is equal to lambda over 8. To find out what is the maximum velocity, you have just to use these two values, okay? And remember that each of these pulses correspond to a displacement of lambda over 8. The se sorry, the separation between these two pulses means that the object has moved of a quantity that is equal to lambda over 8. Okay? So Vmax is simply given by the resolution multiplied by the bandwidth. The higher the bandwidth, since the resolution is fixed, the higher the possible velocity of the moving target. OK? So in particular, V of the target should, uh, should be meaning lower or equal to Vmax. Okay? Uh, 
Let's do some calculation. For example, let's suppose that BL L is equal to 10 megahertz. It's not so difficult nowadays to work with electronic with such a band with it. What happens? Uh, what happens is that we have that DL that Vmax is equal to 80 multiplied by 10 to minus 9. I do a simplified calculation because the resolution is 79, but anyway. 80 nanometers <coughs> multiplied by 10 to 7. So the velocity became 80 multiplied by 10 to minus 2 meter over second. And this means 0 0.8 meter over second. Is it correct? See, okay, okay. Uh, 0 0.8 meter per second is not so uh, slow, okay? It's a fast moving target, okay? And of course, if you increase the bandwidth, width, you can increase the maximum velocity. But anyway, 0 0.8 meter per second, especially when you use this uh, instrument is in an industrial um, situation, in industrial condition, is uh, at quite high velocity, okay? Okay, this is very good. Now, <coughs> okay, this is another point because the measure is uh, performed in an incremental way. So if someone, if someone put his hand here, you lost count, okay? And uh, in your opinion, it's Easy or it's difficult to understand if someone has put his hand here? Looking just at these two signals. <coughs> what happens if you don't have uh, recombination of these two fields here? You don't have interference, okay? And so what happens is that you see DC value of photodetected current, and in particular the DC value of the photodetected current is, is, is equal, okay? So you can say, okay, I see continuous value of detected current, and these values are equal. The problem is that even when you don't have an end that stops the beam, you can have a situation in which the two signal has the same value. Okay? So this is not so easy to understand if someone has stopped the beam. It's not uh, an easy task to accomplish. But of course, if someone stops the beam, you don't have count, and so you lose information on the displacement. This is one point. Okay, then this is uh, a problem that is uh, very, um, very strong when you do baseband measurement. So the interferometric uh, interf electromagnetic interference is very high when you do baseband measurement. So you cannot avoid this. And there is also a problem because, of, co of course, the instrument is very it's very strong because it is able to measure displacement with 80 nanometers of resolution. But if you don't pay attention to what happens around you, so the vibrations that are related to the environment, you will measure that vibration. Because 80 nanometers is a very, very low value of resolution. So for this reason, if you want to use this instrument, you have to isolate the setup or the experiment from the environment. Okay? This is a point. Because the instrument is not able to understand if uh, the, measuring, the measure that is doing uh, is on the environment or on the moving target. It measures everything. This, this means that we are working in baseband. 
Okay, he measured everything. So you have to pay the attention in isolation of the optical signal. <clears throat> and again, there is also a problem in the choice of the value of the comparator to build up the squared, the squared waves. Because, again, uh, the two signals can go very much higher and very much lower than this value. So this is not so easy to, uh, to find. It's not so easy to find out the correct value for the discriminator. Okay? Because if you choose a, an incorrect value of the discriminator, the position in time of these pulses changes. Okay? And so you can get error on the measurement. Okay? And, okay, anyway, this uh, has been a very, very good commercial success of uh, laser interferometry. Next time, so on Monday, we will talk of the double frequency interferometry. Okay? Okay.